I grew up a Three Stooges fanatic, discovering their shorts at an early age on cable. I can remember wandering the aisles of my favorite video store, looking for their movies, when I came across a cover for a film called Stooge Mania. From the box art, I could only assume that it was some kind of Three Stooges retrospective. When I got home and loaded the film into my VCR, however, I discovered it was something much different. It was actually a movie starring Josh Mostel that centered around a man who had a Three Stooges addiction, and it was pretty bad. In the years that followed, I became fascinated with this weird little movie and how it came to be. You see, in the 1980s, there was a huge resurgence in the popularity of the Three Stooges, mainly due to the popularity of the Jump and the Saddle Band song, The Curly Shuffle. I should also point out that there are four Three Stooges shorts in the public domain. Disorder in the Court. You're in a court, not in Clancy's pool room. Sit down. I'm a victim of circumstance. Uh, who are you hitting? Oh, you're gone. <laughs> Malice in the Palace. See, fi, fo, fun. I'm the evil spirit that guards the root and tootin' diamond. Give it to me, lest evil befall you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sing a song of sixpence. and Brideless Groom. Say, miss, would you like to get married? What? Get married? Well, I don't know, but you are kind of cute at that. Oh, it's not me, it's him. <laughs> Three shimps and one curl. As a result of their lapsed copyright, these four shorts served as the introduction to the Three Stooges for a lot of people in my generation. They were widely circulated on VHS for decades, resulting in poor transfers of terrible quality. My head is off. Oh, oh, oh there I am. And as pretty as a picture. Yeah, but Nate, oh, oh, get gone. Oh. But like a lot of forgotten failures I discussed in this channel, things didn't stop there. As I said, in the mid-80s, there was a huge resurgence in the popularity of the Three Stooges, and Paramount decided to cash in and make their own Three Stooges movie. Only Columbia, who owned the rights to the Three Stooges shorts and name, refused involvement. So Paramount then took those four public domain shorts, created a loose narrative around them, and gave us Stooge Mania. My name's Howard. Howard F. Howard. I'm a Stooge Mania. Gave away all my Star Wars show. Released in 1986, this weird movie centers around a Three Stooges fanatic named Howard F. Howard, whose obsession with the Three Stooges starts to interfere with his personal life. The movie kicks off with a flashback that sets up Howard and why he loves the Three Stooges, along with a Stooge Mania theme song that I'm embarrassed to admit I find way too catchy. Guess I Again, because of the popularity of the Curly Shuffle, there's a lot of these weird little rock songs that were made just for this film. The runtime for the movie comes in at just over 80 minutes, and a good portion of that is made up of clips of those public domain shorts, framed in daydreams and visions of the main character. Some of these daydream segments go on for so long that I found myself continually forgetting that I was watching a movie, and not just the Stooges shorts themselves. It's such a bizarre choice, especially because they only have four shorts to work with, and only one of them features Curly. It wouldn't be so bad if they showed a couple of clips here or there or in the credits, but they instead include two to three minute clips, sometimes with very little breathing room in between them. For instance, this is one of the first scenes of the movie. We open on Howard, dreaming about a scene from Disorder in the Court. <laughs> 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 
then he wakes up and goes to make breakfast. Or he puts on the TV, and there's another clip from a different Three Stooges short playing, not even two minutes since the last one. I said stand still. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, I'm blind! You point my eye out! This movie never goes longer than about four minutes without shoehorning in a clip from another public domain short. The movie follows this pace pretty much the rest of the runtime. A couple of minutes of Howard, a couple of minutes of a Stooges short. Which again begs the question, wouldn't someone just rather be watching the Three Stooges uninterrupted instead? I know I would. Oh. And did I mention this film was written and directed by Academy Award-winning filmmaker Chuck Workman? If you've taken any film class in college, you've probably seen this guy's work. His involvement adds to the mystery of this movie's production further. Alright, so aside from clips of the actual Three Stooges, let's talk about the narrative that surrounds the clips. If you could even call it a narrative. Howard is engaged to be married. <laughs> but lately, he is seeing the three public domain stooges everywhere he goes. As it turns out, Howard is part of an epidemic that's sweeping the nation, known as Stooge Mania. Well, it could happen to you. Maybe you're already acting like this. Sometimes he inexplicably sees them in color. While other times he sees them in black and white. Howard starts seeing the Stooges in doorways. Doctor! On easels. And even in arcade machines. Sit down. I'm a victim of circumstance. Eventually, Howard seeks out medical advice from a Stooges psychiatrist, played by <sighs> Sid Caesar. Oh, excuse me. Doctor? Who at least seems like he's having fun here. And I'm seeing things too, like, like I'll be standing there and all of a sudden, the boom, there's Mo, or, or there's, there's Larry, or, or, or there's Curly, or shit. I mean, everywhere I go, there's something happening and I, I don't know what to do. Uh, 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 uh. What'd he say? Out of here. Punch him in the stomach. Yeah, I like that. And then poke him in the eye. Oh, he's poke him in the eye. Without frying, man! Ah, you like all that, oh, yeah. But before he can even get some dialogue in, we cut to another sequence from Bribeless Groom that Howard sees on the wall in the doctor's office that goes on for over two minutes. After this, Howard goes to meet his fiancé's parents for lunch, where he dreams about a different Stooges short for another two and a half minutes. But then the movie also goes beyond that. Like in the wedding scene, things look oddly similar to the set from Bridless Groom, with an Emil Sitka look-alike even appearing. Well, well, well. I just know that if you have true love her. birds already, we can begin. Hey, here's the license. My pal wants to get married in a rush. Oh, it's splendid! <laughs> Music please, darling. It gets even more confusing, because then they start cutting back and forth between a colorized version of the short and the wedding scene taking place with a weird rock song playing. It comes off more like a music video than a movie scene. It's just really odd. But things are about to get even worse. A distraught Howard then ends up on Stooge Row. They call it Stooge Row. It's near the corner of Shadap Street and Nuck Nuck Boulevard. Where he meets a fellow Stooge maniac that looks a little familiar. <laughs> it's a pretty good one. It ain't a Kaylee. 
But it ain't bad either. I hate Charlie. Whoa! He hates Charlie. Francis! <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Ward Nose? Oh, uh, I'm a Mo fan myself. Welcome to Stooge Row, buddy. Hello. Hello. Hi. Goodbye. Another actor that pops up in this scene is the closest we would get to an actual Stooge being in this movie. Masuda? Yeah. <laughs> Like a nice young man. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're, you're frosty. Frosty who? 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 Wall Street? Yeah. That is Mousy Garner. In his youth, he actually replaced part of the original Stooges trio and Ted Healy's act when the original Stooges left to make films on their own. Later in his career, he actually auditioned to replace Joe Besser in The Three Stooges as well. His appearance in this movie is a weird but fun Easter egg that at least shows the filmmakers had some reverence for the real Stooges. But then that is tossed out the window because Harpo Marx shows up inexplicably. And there's no mistaking it. It's clearly supposed to be Harpo Marx, and he's present the rest of the film. The Stooge Maniacs are then rounded up in another music video, and sent to Stooge Hill for de-Stooging. At Stooge Hill, the Stooge Maniacs have therapy sessions designed to make them act normal in society. Oh, and by the way, that is James Avery as one of the orderlies in one of his early film roles. And then we also get these scenes of forced sentimentality to explain how special the Stooges are. Which, again, is just an excuse to cut away to more footage of the shorts. Naturally, the therapy doesn't work as planned, and when a full table of pies are on display in the final scene, you could probably guess where it's going. The Stooge Maniacs accept who they are after watching what else but more public domain Stooges clips, and a pie fight begins. I'm not even sure what the moral of the story is supposed to be here. I guess... Let your family members love the Three Stooges, because there's nothing wrong with that? That's it. That's the end of this movie. I'm truly baffled by the concept of it. If the goal was to capitalize on the Stooges' popularity using the public domain shorts, then why wouldn't they just string these four shorts together and release them on the big screen? I mean, certainly that would have been more cost efficient than constructing this bizarre narrative filler. I don't know if there's some kind of legal roadblock that would prevent them from releasing the shorts as is, but they could have at least had these segments presented by a host, like what AMC would do with Leslie Nielsen the following decade. Instead of this. It doesn't even take a die-hard Three Stooges fan to recognize that the material in this movie is the same four shorts over and over and over and over and over again. Especially considering there are 186 more shorts out there that aren't even mentioned in this movie. A lot of the cast here are doing their best, and you can tell there's a love for the Three Stooges there. But then you're always taken out of their scenes by them shoehorning in another clip from one of these public domain shorts, and you're reminded just how shameless this movie truly is. But thankfully, this movie is long forgotten and out of print, while the three studios themselves continue to live on forever. Leave him alone. I'm quitting. Put up your hands. You're quitting, eh? There.